Hi, my name is Martha Cantu. I'm an artist based in Immokalee, Florida, and I paint because I guess I love it. What inspires me is pretty hard. I started, well, I consider myself to be a portrait artist. So people, people's faces, just looking at people's faces, the hardships that read off of them, like the wrinkles, the stress, I love that. I don't know why. So that inspires me. My kids are a big inspiration. The best way I can describe it, or try to describe it is, like some of the people that actually stop by, um, some of them don't stop and talk. Some of them kind of just drive by and take pictures. And the reason I know is because hubby tells me. And he says they smile, they take pictures, they're trying to figure out how it was done. I think that's how it affects society. Like it's something, something good. With all the bad that's going on in the world, it's just something good, something just to take you out of that headspace for a minute. My background is really hard to explain. I know I'm Mexican, I was born in Mexico, didn't come here until I was four. But as far as identity and who I am, if I wasn't a mom or a wife, that's really hard to explain. I guess I'm still figuring it out and still lack the courage to explore who I am as a person. I'm not sure how it came about. Um, the construction company for 7-Eleven approached me. Uh, they said they got their my name, number, from when I did the Immokalee welcome sign, and it went from there. They wanted something Immokalee-like. I didn't know what that meant, so I kind of took my ideas of what Immokalee is to me, and I wanted it to be inclusive, so I kind of purposely left people out of it. Um, I was thinking about going as far back as World War II to maybe do some planes in the sky, but I thought that was a bit much and I didn't want to go that route. So I decided to do three different panels. One with uh, cattle drivers, how Immokalee was founded. Uh, one with farm workers, because that's the backbone of Immokalee, I feel it is. And then one to highlight the swamp areas that we have surrounding Immokalee. So that's what it is. I really don't have a name for them other than Panels of Wetland and Panel of Cowboy. In these pieces, it's very colorful. I would like to think that all of my artwork is colorful, although sometimes it can get very dark, but I like the colors. It makes me happy. And I, and I hope it makes other people happy. I know it does attract the eye, and that's what I was going for. Something pleasing, just something that catches you from afar, draws you in. My first experience creating a mirror actually came about from a really bad time in my life. And my mentor at that time uh, just pulled me out of the building and just said, okay, I want you to paint. Uh, I thought it was really dumb at first. I didn't think it was going to work, you know, but I, I even cried about it. Like, I don't have paint. I don't have brushes. And he's like, well, I'll get them for you. And that's how I started. And I didn't know what to paint. It was a big, giant wall. What could I paint? And he's like, well, you like painting butterflies. Why don't you paint a big, giant butterfly? So I painted a few of them. And it took me hours upon hours trying to figure out how to paint on stucco and try to make straight lines and try not to, you know, F up. But that's how it went. That was my first experience as I'm painting a mural, first experience I'm painting on stucco. I loved it. My first, very first drawing that I can remember, I was about six or seven. And I hate to say that it was Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Every Mexican household has a Jesus in the hallway or the living room hanging. And that was mine. Uh, I didn't know to speak, I didn't know how to speak English when I first came here, and my stepfather sure as heck didn't know much Spanish, but I remember wanting his attention, needing his attention, I don't know why, don't know how, but I got off of my 
floor and went to the hallway and just started drawing Jesus. His eyes drew me in and I started sketching him. I was so proud of it too. I went to go show my dad or my stepdad. I wasn't calling him dad at that time. And he gave me a stern look, uh, turned down the TV or turned it off, I can't remember, and came to me. He's like, now you tell me the truth. As he looked at my drawing and looked at Jesus on the wall, does your picture look like the painting on the wall? And I just told him the truth. No, it didn't. And he's like, okay, now don't bother me during my wrestling hour until your picture looks exactly like the one on the wall. And that was it. That was my first drawing piece. I don't remember how long it took, whether it was days, hours, or weeks. But I got it to look exactly like the Jesus on the wall. And I went back happily to my stepdad and I showed it to him. That was it. That was my first art piece. How couldn't you? <laughs> yeah, any place, a meeting spot, um, a location, even a coffee shop, like just maybe setting up a date for like artists to meet, you know, come whoever wants to come, artists, poets, anything. Just, just somewhere where artists can inspire other artists. That'd be great. I would say, Keep going, keep doing it, keep painting, keep sketching, keep getting in the morning, you know, writing down your poems, your ideas. Nothing's too dumb. I don't want society to crush them or kind of pull them back into the real world. Um, I would tell them the same thing I tell my kids, like, it's awesome. Uh, there's a place for it. Whether you believe there is or there, you know, you don't, there is a place for it.